first uh, speaker is uh, a longtime uh, participant in Wisconsin Grassroots Network. He's worked uh, diligently on the subject of uh, election integrity. Uh, it's not only, of course, on getting people to vote, but it's also being sure the votes are counted. And uh, so she's going to talk a little about election integrity and what she learned by being very involved in uh, the recount process. Uh, so, Karen McKim, thank you. Karen McKim. of the Wisconsin Election Integrity Action Team, a uh, volunteer gig I took on after retiring from a 30-year career in state government in quality assurance and management auditing. And mostly I'm going to talk about voting rights today, uh, the full range of our voting rights, not just the right to cast a vote, but the right to have that vote counted, and the right to make sure that the people who govern us were put there by our votes and by nothing else. But before I talk about voting machines, I want to talk about ATMs. These two systems are very uh, analogous in a way, and it helps us to think straight about what we should expect of computerized decision-making systems if we think about both at the same time. Now, your local election official will tell you the voting machines are fine because they are federally certified. There's federal standards that govern voting machines, and that is true. There are federal regulations and um, standards that govern both ATMs and voting machines. And it is true that the standards that govern both the ATMs are more rigorous, more up-to-date, and better enforced, but your local election officials are telling you the truth when they say that your voting machine probably did meet federal standards that were in effect at the time your voting machine was new. <laughs> your local election official will also tell you that they do the very best IT security that is within their power to protect these voting machines from problems and from hacking and from manipulation. And that is also true. They do the very best job that they are able with IT security. It is also true that at the bank, they own and control the software that runs the ATMs and counts your dollars, and they can inspect that software for problems. It is true that at the bank, they have a full-time professional staff of IT security experts working day in and day out to ensure the integrity of these ATMs. Your town clerk does the very best he or she can with what the resources she, he or she has available to him. Now, in both of these systems, you make a deposit. In this system, you deposit your paycheck and you trust that the dollars will be credited to the right account. In this system, you deposit a ballot and you trust that the votes will be credited to the right candidate. Now let's take a look at what happens at the end of the business day. In this system, the system with the federal, federal regulation and the more professional IT management, the contents of that ATM will be reconciled against the computer tape at the end of every business day. The transactions will be audited both at the banks that sent the money and the banks that received the money. Every day they will check to make sure everything stays accurate and in the end of the month they will send you a statement that you yourself can verify that your deposit was credited to the right account. At the end of the business day over in this machine where you've made a deposit, the poll workers will check that the system kept track of the right number of transactions. They will check to make sure they have the right number of ballots, but they won't check that your votes were credited to the right candidate. They'll pack up the election results and they'll send them to the municipal campus, which will have a week to review the election results, and they will not check to make sure that your votes were credited to the right candidate. The municipal campus will certify the results to the county campus. The county campus will have another week to look at the election results, and they will not check to make sure that your votes were credited to the right candidate. They will, at the end of that week, sign a statement that says, we have reviewed these election results and we have found them to be true and correct. And they will send them to the State Elections Commission without checking their accuracy. The Wisconsin Elections Commission will add up the certified results from all the counties and will certify them as our statewide results without checking to make sure that your votes were credited to the right candidate. 
And then the new president, or governor, or senator, or congressional representative, or state legislature will be sworn into office, and no one will ever have checked to make sure that your vote was credited to the right candidate. Now, 20 other states require local election officials to check accuracy before certification, but Wisconsin's not one of them. Wisconsin allows it. Any municipal clerk or county clerk could check accuracy they wanted to, but they don't. Now, let's, what, let's look at what happens when customers suspect an error. If you get a bank statement and you say, Ew, that's not right, my checking account should have more money than that, you can call the bank or go to the bank and they'll sit down with you and they'll review the records and they'll either prove them accurate or they will find the error and correct it and do an adjustment on your bank statement. These managers over here don't just see their job as counting dollars, they see their job as counting dollars accurately and they consider that verifying that accuracy is a routine part of their job as managers. What happens over here when the customers, the voters, say, that's not right, that's not the person who was predicted to get Wisconsin's electoral votes, how about you check accuracy? They will go to their election officials and say, check that before you certify it. <coughs> And the local election officials will point to the Wisconsin recount statutes and say, you're just a voter, you don't have standing to ask for verified accuracy. Only a candidate has standing to ask for a recount. It's your vote, but you cannot ask us to verify accuracy. So then, once in a blue moon, a candidate does come forward and does ask for a recount. <laughs> Someone like Jill Stein will step forward and say, Wisconsin voters are entitled to verified accuracy, and I demand a recount. And at that point, what will Wisconsin election officials say to that candidate? They will say that unless you suspect an error that's one quarter of one percent or smaller, you have to pay the full estimated cost of that verification. You have to pay it upfront in cash. You have to raise $3.2 million in cash over the Thanksgiving holiday, or we will not verify the accuracy of our work product. That's what happens in these two systems. Now, I have been on this election integrity gig for five years, and I've been asked dozens of times, but is there a problem? Can you prove that Wisconsin election results are inaccurate? Yes, there is a problem. There is a problem that these managers are operating a computerized decision-making system that has a tiny fraction of the integrity that this system has. Human beings are capable of verifying the accuracy of their computerized decision-making systems. One of these managers is doing it and one is not. Yes, I have proof that there is a problem. Or more specifically, political science researchers have proof that there is a problem. When you are dealing with a computer literate electorate, and you operate a system like this, you are eroding voter confidence and you are eroding voter turnout. And there is only one way to build confidence in a computer literate electorate, and that's to run a, man, a verified accurate election system. <coughs> We would not tolerate this from the managers that operate the computers that tabulate our grocery bill at the scanners. We would not tolerate an IT management system like this from the city treasurer who uses computers to calculate our property tax bills. This is the only computerized decision-making system in the state of Wisconsin in either the public or the private sector where we just allow unverified computer output to make the decision for us. Now, the recount showed us what happens when you operate a computerized decision-making system for a decade without checking its accuracy. You can imagine what would happen with the bank and the ATM. Before the recount, Wisconsin County canvases and county clerks had certified election results in every county. They certified a vote total for every candidate in every ward across the state, thousands of vote totals. Those pre-recount totals are still on the Wisconsin Election Commission website. Then Jill Stein and her supporters and those of us that contributed to that research bought verification and made them check the accuracy of their work. And the county canvases went back and reviewed the accuracy of their work. And they filed new vote totals, a total for every candidate in every ward across the state. 
any one of you can go on to the Wisconsin Election Commission website, get a spreadsheet, compare those two totals. The vote totals differed after the recount, before the recount, by 17,681 votes. The county clerks changed the totals by 17,681 votes with the recount. That's how sloppy a system gets when it never checks its accuracy. Now, Damien Christmas and I are going to have a breakout session following this about the results of the recount. And we'll go into more detail about what caused those, those vote changes in the recount. But I'm going to tell you one story right now. I can explain 304 of those votes right now. In the city of Marinette, they used a machine called the Optech Eagle to count their early and absentee ballots. And on election night, in the three precincts where those machines were used, the poll workers pushed a button, printed out a tape, and those three tapes together said, we didn't see votes for president on 23.6% of the ballots. Almost a quarter of the ballots that were counted by those machines in the city of Granite appeared to be blank for president. Now, you, I heard the groan. You all heard the groan. That's not possible. <coughs> that is an obvious electronic miscount. Now, what does the state of Wisconsin's Canvas procedure do? What kicks in when the tape shows even an obvious miscount? The poll workers looked at the tape and they certified that the ballots had been counted correctly. Not the votes, just the ballots. They sent those election results to the municipal canvas. The municipal canvas looked at those tapes that showed an obvious electronic miscount and they certified those results without investigation and without correction. And they sent them to the county canvas. Now if you study Wisconsin statutes and you really look for the buck stops here responsibility for accurate election results, especially in the national race, it lies with the county canvas. So the city canvas sent those results to the county canvas and the Marinette County canvas looked at them and certified the results as true and correct. We have reviewed these results, we find them to be true and correct. Signed statements, send it to the state. No investigation, no correction. Wisconsin Election Commission posted those on the website as certified election results and said, unless someone demands a recount, this is what we're certifying for our presidential election results. Fortunately, this time, someone came along and demanded a recount, but most of the time, people don't. And if that, those results had been certified as final, 304 voters in the city of Marinette alone would have been completely disenfranchised. Now this, I don't want to sound bleak, this is a solvable problem. 20, more than 20 states now certify, uh, verify the election results are accurate before they certify. Wisconsin could too. There's modern techniques that are efficient and reliable and economical. This is something any municipal or county clerk in Wisconsin could be doing now under state law. And in our workshop, we'll describe more about how that could happen. Uh, and we'll also describe more about the recount. But my 10 minutes are up, and I just want to say, if you want to find out more about how our votes are counted, how we could get verified accurate results brought home to Wisconsin, and more about the details of what we discovered in the recount, go to wisconsinelectionintegrity.org or come to the breakout workshop. So again, I'm Karen McKinnon, Wisconsin Election Integrity uh, Action Team. Thanks so much. Let's get our votes counted.